one of my favourite titles from the previous generation of video games had to be Deus Ex Human Revolution. Alongside the vast majority of popular action RPGs at the time that had vast empty worlds and janky unrefined gameplay, it stood out as a detailed polished title with heaps of player choice in the moment to moment gameplay that still managed to have satisfying and refined mechanics. I've always been a bigger fan of action RPGs with small environments but bountiful detail and finer points than giant ass wastelands with copy pasted assets like Fallout or Elder Scrolls. Mass Effect somehow manages the impressive feat of having a tiny, small and cramped game world and being incredibly undetailed, so gold star for you, Bioware. In other words, I was pretty pumped for Mankind Divided and I had a good time, hooray, a non-offensive, non-contrarian opinion, one for the ages. This time Adam Jensen is on the trail of the Illuminati amidst a worldwide street-level conflict between normal human beings and augmented people. Those who have robotic body enhancements, whether it be advanced prosthetic limbs or cybernetic brain implants, which started near the beginning of Human Revolution, but was catalyzed further into full-blown panic when at that game's climax a virus was spread, causing many cyborgs to lose their minds and go psycho. Who's fueling these fires of chaos and how will Adam Jensen navigate a web of lies and deceit to uncover the truth when he himself is a member of a subjugated class? This premise has a lot of potential for a choice-driven narrative action RPG that Mankind Divided fails a bit to take advantage of. One of Adam Jensen's main targets in the game are augmented terrorists, killing and blowing people up to strike back against the racism there is towards cyborg folk. Since you play as an augmented character, this puts you in a very cool position for possible choices. Would Adam sympathize with these people and their plight, or would he want to put a stop to them no matter what? Would he try and debate them down, just let them do their own thing, or hell, would he join those causing the terror to get what he believes is right for his people? A game that forces you to endure the humiliation of being a discriminated member of society and then tries to seduce you with a chance of violent retribution could be really, really interesting. Unfortunately, while Adam is allowed to more or less have an opinion on what he believes, you're not permitted to deviate from what's expected of you as righteous established video game character Adam Jensen, even if you can be a complete sadist within the gameplay. Basically, before the final mission, you're told what your stance on the matter has to be. That Adam may or may not agree with the plight of the terrorists, but we have to take him down because they're taking innocent lives and that's how the climax of the game has to work. Of course, there is also that bit at the start where Adam sees the horror of the bombs and gets all bent out of shape. How could they do this? I'm not saying that it would necessarily make sense for Adam to have the choice to join different factions in the story as it's presented now, but the fact that the game is so determined to give the character a one root course when the setting and subject matter could allow for all sorts of mad possibilities and choices feels like a missed opportunity. This is all because of the baggage Deus Ex has as a series. If this game was standalone and starred some random new augmented character, they probably could have had way more leeway with the story and what choices the protagonist could have made. Hell, if we had to have Adam Jensen back and playable because he's so popular, why not have two playable characters? One where the path is more set in stone and another we can experiment with more. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I just set off the asking for more game in my game alarm. We're not allowed to ask for that anymore. Because games are expensive. Because publishers decided they should be. This is overall what makes Mankind Divided the odd man out in the Deus Ex franchise. Unlike the first three games that all start new protagonists in a self-contained story, Mankind Divided reveals itself by the end to be really the second part of a big old Adam Jensen trilogy. The game sets up like three plots and solves about one of them and then calls it a day. You're just going about things trying to track down the Illuminati and then all of a sudden the game's like, Hey, it's up to us to take out Umbrella. <laughs> The thing is, if Adam Jensen's full journey had been in this game, it probably would have gotten away with doing a lot more. Giving Adam extra options, like sympathizing with the terrorists or abandoning Interpol, probably could have been done if the game had let you tie up all its loose ends and didn't need Adam Jensen to be squeaky clean enough to show up all neutral in his third game. Human Revolution's gameplay might have floundered a bit near the end with its janky final level, but the ending itself was climactic in its own way, making it feel self-contained, and I liked the different choices at the climax. A choice-driven climax that Mankind Divided is rather of a vague about. Oh yeah, Adam, we found you, uh, you know, floating about after the end of the last game. Uh, what choice did I make about divulging the truth at the end? What choice? What choice? There was, there was, a, there was a choice? There are some other little niggles like Sarif returning with a new voice actor when his original one sounded so cool. Maybe he actually went underground, you know? Maybe the, maybe the fruit flies actually got him. Area 51, deadly, dangerous fruit flies. But seriously, if they replaced him just because of some dumb jokey conspiracy video, I'm really disappointed because he had some really groovy inflections that separated his character's style from the rank and file. You did what you had to do, son. 
As far as I'm concerned, Sanders got what he deserved. Granted, I did smoke a little bit of weed tonight, but that's not a... I don't think that plays into it. In terms of Adam, though, I felt a little less invested in his plight this time around. Mainly because this game lacks all of the cool side characters of the previous title or much of a personal drive for him to accomplish. In the last game, Adam was looking for who killed his girlfriend, not to mention he had a cool gang of lovable teammates like Pritchard, Malik, and wacky old Sarif. I never really cared for this Alex chick or Miller or Grumpy Pants Britbong. Guess we'll see Pritchard again with the DLC. Overall, Mankind Divided wrestles Adam Jensen away from the player's control, but then doesn't really go out of its way to use that control to do its own thing with the character. We don't really get many moments of introspection or pathos with the guy. I still love Adam Jensen, but either go full out with his character or let me dictate his destiny with a little more control. While the story might lack a bit in the way you go on to shape things, thankfully, gameplay still has that tight sense of emergent choice that made Human Revolution so refreshing when it brought back Deus Ex to begin with. Deciding which skills to put points into and craft Crafting your Adam Jensen's approach to conflict is absolutely compelling. I started up the game, slapped on Give Me Deus Ex, because you just can't say no to a difficulty called that, did a pacifist run and had a blast becoming elite hacker, debating Jensen out of tight spots and traversing the environment stealthily with invisibility orgs and ninja mobility enhancements. But I'd still love to go back and see how things would play out if I was Psycho Jensen, murdering all my enemies, and that's what makes this game so fun. You can totally be the absolute badass of your choosing, at least within the gameplay. A favorite part of my kind divided was the sleuthing. Getting into apartments and safe havens, collecting all the info I needed and making it out of there like a ghost. This is all so compelling thanks to just how detailed all the environments are. As I was saying before, the smaller scale allows for every location to feel so authentic thanks to the amount of polish that's possible. This comes in tow with an aesthetic that I love. The cybernetically enhanced dystopian near future always gets me giddy and when it's rendered with this much attention to detail I can't get enough of exploring it. I completed every side mission I came across because I I actually wanted to, not because I had a checklist of things shoved in my face like countless other titles. What it lacks in main RPG plots, the game totally makes up for with its small stories told across its environmental design. TV interviews that change throughout the adventure and hidden note files and emails that paint a superb picture of each NPC's individual story. Specific mention has to go towards the throat, a section of an org ghetto you get to explore, a huge canyon of stacked cyborg shacks that was beautiful to climb even though not much was going on. Everything's got a really nice layer of polish. Even if there aren't any real-time reflections, the original Deus Ex still wins that round. And, you know, maybe moving bodies could use a bit of work, but, you know, you know, other than that. The animations are still a bit awkward, but better than last time. Even though it seems like every cyber dystopia game is still catching up with MGS4's animation from eight goddamn years ago. What truly does lack some polish, though, were the compressed, pixely, pre-rendered cutscenes. Human Revolution did this, too, and yeah, in that game it was way worse. But it still took me out of things here when I was chucked out of gameplay and into a fakey fake movie. They're just a little too compressed, not that you'll be able to tell on YouTube, because everything's gonna look compressed. The in-game engine looks better, why do this? Performance-wise on PC, things were a little bit rocky. I had a solid performance after tweaking my settings down a bit, nothing crazy was required to hit 60 FPS, but oh my god, the loading times. You know, I made a little fun video years ago pointing out a few problems I had with the excellent human revolution. I was like, man, these loading times are pretty annoying. But everyone was like, haha, it's on the PlayStation, it's just the price we have to pay if you want to play it on a console. Well, can someone explain why I'm getting up with of four to five minute loading screens when going to a new area and Mankind Divided on my killer PC. Which, okay, could use a bit more RAM, but you know, just come on. Four to five minutes. Insanity. Here's a pro tip if you're one of those suffering from this issue. Don't make the mistake I did by quick saving and then jumping on a train, waiting five minutes, and then accidentally hitting quick load when you get off the train. Because you'll have to wait for five minutes while the previous town loads and get on the same train you were just on and wait another five minutes all over again. Well, the game runs fine. What is with this port that I'm getting this madness? Do I really need an SSD just for this? Is, you know, is this how it is? Like, I thought the game had a lot of content, but the fact that I spent hours of play just on these trains probably lowers that total quite a bit. I get it, there are less individual loading screens than last time, the areas being rendered are bigger, but I have never, ever had something load this long. It's just incredible. But it wasn't like I was losing my mind or anything. Loading time. When I need to go cross town, all I feel is fear. Loading time. You don't have to click home, but you can't play here. I know when I'm going on my phone. 
I know when I'm going on my phone. I know when I'm going on my phone. On my phone. Please don't post a comment saying you didn't have a problem because that will not return to me those missing hours of my life. I don't even want to hear a solution to be honest, it will just make me more upset if there is one and I missed it. Oh yeah, the interface also leaves a bit to be desired. The map system is just really balked for some reason. The mouse scroll zooms out super slow. Sometimes it just messes up objective markers altogether. Like, wow, funny how this mission is over here and this other mission is in the exact same place. Even though it isn't, it is in a completely separate location in town. Whoops. Also, I really liked how when hacking in Human Revolution, you saw the hack on the monitor you were breaking into and could look around. It made it super exciting to break into a place you shouldn't be worried that a guard might spot you. They can still spot you in Mankind Divided, but unfortunately here you're warped into the goddamn hacking dimension and can't see anything around you. Also, you used to be able to use the mouse to drag around the screen in these hacking sections, but that can't be done now. Very much sounds like the controls are a one-to-one -one conversion from the console and they weren't fully updated for the mouse. But other than some annoying interface issues, the gameplay is still really tight and feels good to play, which is something not many Western RPGs can boast. And even though I gave the game a bit of a bollocking for flaking on some of its potential in the narrative, I still liked parts of Adam's latest tale. I like the different members of Ark and their ideology, I like the Gollum City level and how people there deal with the issues of the world, I like how Bob Page with his original voice says the words Adam Jensen legitimizing the character in old school canon. This is still a pretty cool story, even if by the end it only feels like half of one. And as I said, gameplay is a hell of a time. Taking people out feels good, stealthing around is cathartic. I mean, it does commit to the odd stealth game sin, like letting you ghost a section and then having the main character do a whoopsie and just get caught off guard in a pre-rendered sequence the player had no control over. Which is something Human Revolution was guilty of to a way worse extent. When Adam would just strike roll into a room gormlessly after you just spent the whole level cautiously trying to sneak around and get caught off guard by a boss. Whoa, 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 I actually didn't write this bit in the script, but I just remembered because I said the word boss. Remember how Human Revolution had some really annoying bosses that you had to take out by force even if you were playing stealthy? Well, Mankind Divided is taking the easy way out by just not really having bosses at all. There's one. That's, you, you get one. And it's well done. It's, it uses the mechanics well. It's fine. You should have done more. Bosses are cool. I like MGS4. Anyway, back to the script. Lastly though, I'll touch upon one of the most disappointing aspects of Mankind Divided. Some of the most gratuitous microtransactions I've ever seen. I mean, this is real world money for a power-up in a game you already probably paid 40 quid for. Hey, here's all your moves. Oh, sorry, you lost a bunch of them, but it's okay. You can buy them back for real world money and break the game. It's just gauche, man. It's just absolutely gauche. Do people really want to buy this stuff and ruin their experience? Something definitely tells me that this isn't the kind of thing a creator would want to put in their game. Stinks more of upper management meddling, which is a really skeevy thing to do. But would I still recommend this game? Well, I'm easily seduced by comfy cyberpunk environments, and if you are too, while Mankind Divided may not light up your world like Human Revolution did, and even though I'm a bit let down by the inconclusive nature of the ending, I do want to see that climactic finale to Adam Jensen's journey and did have a good time here. Whether the devs ran out of time or they didn't get enough resources from Square to tie the story up now, now, who knows? But what I will say is that Mankind Divided, despite all its shortcomings, still manages to be one of the coolest action RPGs I've played in a while. I just wish I could say it was one of the generation's best games like I can with Human Revolution. Well, yeah, actually I probably could do that, but it wouldn't be saying that much. The gameplay here offers plenty of choice, even if the story could use a little more. If you want to get immersed in a rich world and create your own brand of cunning cyborg agent, this is still probably the best you're going to get in a AAA environment at the moment. I just pray that you don't get some of the massive technical hiccups that I did. I never asked for this. <laughs>